Okay, let's try this again. I think I just went live and then I changed accounts and started watching myself. But hi, Maya. Yay. Great. Hey. Hi. Hey. I think I, I, I did something crazy before. I was like looking at myself online. I don't know what was happening. <laughs> so I'm, I, I'm technologically always, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. <laughs> I know. Challenge. I hear you. It's Me a too. Challenge. Yeah, I'm so glad. And these live things are, we, I mean, we're learning as we go, aren't we? Totally. These live but things are crazy. Absolutely, just like in many ways, flying hey, by the seat of our pants. Yay! <laughs> uh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad to finally get to talk to you. This I know. So great. Hi, um, Colette. My my big sister is here tuning in. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, uh, um, we'll we'll give people a, a second to kind of jump in, um, and there'll be people coming in and out. Obviously, um, mm. IG Live is you know it's people people are kind of tuning in and out all day but we will have yeah. this uh, posted on our page so if people do miss it they can come back and and check it out and watch the full thing in the in the comfort of their you know own time um but just yeah so excited to actually have an opportunity <laughs> to get to talk to you uh, face to face face to face yeah, <laughs> right i know the new um, the new face to face the new face to face <laughs> totally and and definitely you know like i've i've been following your work for a while and i we know so many people in common we have so mm. many crossovers um and so and so just thinking about badass mama jamas who are out there <laughs> change making cultural working you know creating making a difference and creating change while Trying. also mothering and raising the next generation. Um, yeah. You're, you're on one of the, one of the tops of the list. So I'm so oh, glad that this works. <laughs> um, so I, I, we don't do this in a traditional way at all. You know, we don't um, place at the table has really was recreated from being inside of quarantine, knowing our work so much as Contratiempo as a dance company was so much about physical engagement with folks, you know, in-person engagement and but wanting to continue the kind of work that that we do and we're committed to but being able to um you know move it online and, and but still be able to have some of those deep connections and conversations that we were doing live before any of the any of COVID happened mm. um and then you know and then the moment in in terms of where we are politically as a country just you know has exploded in such a powerful way that we are now in a place where these conversations are critical for um, you know, our capacity to be able to ground, reconnect to what we believe in, reconnect to other people doing important work that we wanna make sure to support and connect with. But then also um, just having these spaces to, to explore and talk about and delve into what's happening, right? Like what's happening and how are we on the ground responding to it um, in the moment? Um, so I'd love yeah. for our, our conversation to be about like big picture in terms of like who you are, you know, as, as a mama artist. <laughs> And also, who am I? That's like, the question, isn't it? I know. Who are you, Maya? <laughs> who am I? <laughs> it's not, it's, you know, we could have like four hours of this. <laughs> there you go. Or a lifetime. Um, or a lifetime. <laughs> or a lifetime. But, but really, truly also continually being in a discourse with like what's happening in the world right now. Because I think that's, um, that's what everyone, that's what we're all, you know, have rolling up our sleeves and are in it right now. And so I just, Lisa. um, yay, there's so just many shouting out Elisa. I am. Yeah. Yay, I am. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I love yeah. it. I mean, this is the, this is the, what's going to happen. They're going to be people continually right. going and commenting. And so if we can also, because the recording doesn't record the comments, if there are comments, oh, okay. say them out loud. No, say them out loud so that okay. we, can, we can capture them and um, right. connect with them. Um, so yeah, let's start off with that. Let's start off with just who you are and how you want oh to be known inside of the space. Wow. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yeah. Mwah. To the love that does. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I don't even know where to begin. Um, but I want to explain, I want to explain myself. Yes. Um, <laughs> I think I've always, I've always been another. I've always mm. been different. Um, so my story is, uh, my father is Mexican. My mom is Turkish. They met in Israel in Haifa, actually, the city of mm. Haifa, while my mom was on a pilgrimage because my Turkish grandmother became a Baha'i. 
Mm. And she's one of the, actually one of the first Baha'is in Turkey. And uh, Baha'i is a religion. We believe in nine, nine prophets of God. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe in the oneness of, of mankind. And I, I say all of that because it really informs who I am and how I grew up. Yeah. Um, so I was born in Mexico in La, La Paz, Baja California. My family actually from Guanajuato um, mm -hmm. and Querétaro and that, that region. Um, that's where my roots are, my indigenous mm -hmm. roots, my Spanish roots. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, I do identify as, you know, Chicana, being, you know, from neither here or nor there. I also yeah. identify as indigenous Mexican. Mm -hmm. I'm also Turkish. Um, you know, I, my parents moved to Australia when I was one year old. Mm. It happened to be a time when um, Australia used to have a white Australia policy, when they were not allowing anybody into the country that was not white. And, that and they was, actually said that, articulated in that, that way? That was a, a policy, yes. And it, and it also meant that there was in, obviously incredible uh, racism, genocide yeah. against our Aboriginal people of Australia, um, and, and really horrific racism that still has a legacy to this day. Yeah. Um, but this was 1980, and this was a time when they, they realized they only had about 10 million people in the country. They needed to open their borders. Mm -hmm. so they needed workers. So my family took advantage of that opportunity and applied to move to Australia. We actually applied to move to Canada as well. Mm -hmm. My mother um, never wanted to be in the United States, never even thought about migrating to the United States. Mm. In her mind, she was like, we protested yeah. America, <laughs> like in the 70s in Turkey, yeah. like she was one of those people protesting in the United States. So it wasn't ever a dream of hers, but she also knew, you know, um, that she wanted to give us more, uh, her children, my sister yeah. and I, and more opportunity. And so they applied to uh, Australia and Canada and Australia answered first. Mm. They sold everything. My father is an engineer, um, hydrologist, mm. um, and he actually got a scholarship to University of Guanajuato. He, um, he, he w went on scholarship to, the reason he was in Haifa was he went on, yeah, the reason he was, was in Haifa is because he got a scholarship to study abroad, one year abroad at the university over there. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, my family are not, you know, they've always been working class, basically arrived selling everything they had with two suits. Plane and I keep getting um, cut Am out I freezing? Because, no, no, it's my mother-in-law who's calling my phone oh. because, because my <laughs> son hung up on her. Call her back. <laughs> call her back. Okay, call Mom her back. Mom calling yeah. me because she keeps calling me. I'm like, Mom I can't life. answer the phone right now. So call her back. This is mom life. I <laughs> totally, love it. Totally. Always. Always. You're going to come busting through the door any no, minute. No matter how it's much probably. I set it up to be able to, like, have a moment, like, like, you know, yeah, no. it's like no. But this is cool because I probably need to be cut off anyway because I I can <laughs> no, go no, on. No, it's good. But anyways, someone we, asked if your mother is Turkish. Your mother is Turkish, and yes. And so I have a yes. quick question about all of this. Did you? So were you? How old were you when you actually left Mexico? Or were you? Were you speaking Spanish by was, then? Or were you? I a was baby? one. No, you were a baby. So my sister was, but I wasn't. Okay. Uh, my mom speaks fluent Spanish. She studied, so my mom is trilingual. Okay. Uh, my father actually speaks seven languages because wow. I think my father is on the spectrum, but never yeah. like been diagnosed. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> That's amazing. Well, I love my Seven dad. languages. But, but he's very, you know, it's languages and maths. He's a mathematician. Yeah. yeah. But social, social, uh, yeah. like, could never get it together socially, <laughs> yeah. right? I probably inherited some of that. But anyways, <laughs> all that to say, like, we moved to Australia with nothing, um, mm -hmm. you know, and we started. And that's what I grew up seeing was, mm -hmm. you know, we are immigrants. We work hard. My mom has worked, you know, she only just retired. She's worked most of her entire life since she was a child. Yeah. Um, sacrificed for us. Um, the whole Spanish English thing. My sister speaks uh, fluent Spanish, but what happened was we went through what most migrant families go through, which is the teachers say, don't talk to your kids exactly. in that language because they're confused. Yes. 
just speak to them in English. Is, so the idea was we'll teach you Spanish later on and, and never happened. Yeah, so. which is which they're figuring out now that actually makes that it actually helps your brain to be able to process multiple things to be able to speak English, multiple languages early. <laughs> so but that, but still there's there's still schools doing that telling telling folks to only speak. It's, I mean, it's, it, it's yeah. idiotic. Yeah. yeah, it drives me crazy. And, you know, my cousin, my we have an international family. My Turkish auntie married a, a Japanese man and lived mm -hmm. in Japan for 15 years, um, then migrated to Australia. So my cousin is trilingual as well. She speaks Turkish, yeah. Japanese, English. You know, like we, I've always grown up with this experience. And first of all, being the only ones in Australia, not right. so people that we – met became family members became mm -hmm. auntie became mm -hmm. grandma i have an australian grandma and you know yes. what i mean yeah yeah that kind of thing but also understanding like i have family in mexico i have family in turkey i have family in the united yeah. states like and, and that that like i mean international kind of like upbringing in terms of really your your village was in multiple continents global um that glo really truly global yeah how is that how has that impacted what you decided to do with your life and who you are yeah. kind of like now? I, it's so funny because of course, what do you do when you're half mixed kind of Turkish in Australia? <laughs> <laughs> well, you be, you fall in love with hip hop. Of course you do. Totally. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah. Hip hop to me, I always, you know, you have to <clears throat> do interviews and write your bio and stuff. And, and I've always articulated in a way like hip hop became my culture. Yeah. That was, you know, when I discovered, I discovered hip hop and R&B music when I was very young, like mm -hmm. maybe 12 or 13, but it wasn't until I was 18 um, that I discovered it as a culture mm -hmm. with the four elements mm -hmm. and the community that existed in my city of Sydney, mm -hmm. um, where people, you know, practiced and convened and came together for freestyle battles or mm -hmm. breaking battles or, mm -hmm. you know, just, I, I just fell in love with that. Yeah. But I'm also a dancer. I grew up dancing too. And yes. that to me was my number one love. That's, I, that's actually yes. how I identified you first before I started interviewing really? you. Yes, as a dancer. more than, But that's also like my wow. lens. <laughs> that's, who, uh, that's who I am inside. Yes. That's like I've always made up dances as a kid. I, I was one of those latchkey kids that my mom wouldn't get home till really late. So, yeah. I, you know, I lived down the street from my primary school and I'd – I swear I would put the, the stereo in the front of my house and <laughs> perform for the street, which was nobody. <laughs> it was nobody. <laughs> but I'd be making up my dance moves, and, you know. And gaining and, that confidence. <laughs> I don't know who I was dancing to, I but love I, I love Janet Jackson and, you know, and oh, playing all it. that music. And, yeah, that was – those were the times. So I think it informed, you know, I think I always – I don't know. I think I always knew that I had a place in this world mm -hmm. and that um, also being in the hip hop community, you have, uh, you know, you have, you have family everywhere, no yeah. matter where you travel to. Yeah. You yeah. know, you, you're in touch with the, with the community. If that makes sense. Absolutely. Well, and then how, so, so have you always considered your work activist work or is it that you kind of came, I mean, Hip yeah. because there because hip hop is even though it's deeply rooted in activism and deeply rooted in change making it's not there are many people who are in the in the field of hip hop that don't don't embody that sort of activist well, we spirit would that say it seems rap. like your work we yeah. would say that that was to me I'd ca yes <laughs> yeah we we have our <laughs> categories this yeah. is conscious rap yes. or whatever but to me it's like you know it's KRS one rap is something you do yes. hip hop is something you live yes and that's I was like. You know, yes. I learned I learned from the greats. <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah, I think um, I don't know if I ever articulated it because I don't know as a 19, 20 year old that I understood that. Yeah. But it's funny because I've been doing so much reflection um, in these times. And I, I listened to a song that I did with Abstract Rude, actually, mm -hmm. who's I love from mm -hmm. L.A., um, we did a song called songs of freedom and I was probably 20 years old, mm. maybe 21. And I'm listening to the lyrics and it's me trying to, as a Mexican woman in Australia, where you have to understand there were, I didn't know any Mexicans. Mm -hmm. There was at that time, 1000 of us in my state. 
Wow. And we did not live close in community. Mm -hmm. And when I finally found Mexican community, I realized that it was um, children that were half Mexican, half something else, but Mm -hmm. it was their mother that was Mexican. So they had a they had a community based because their mothers Mm -hmm. were Mexican Mm -hmm. and women get together. Yes. But because it was and women also like, like instill that connection to your roots and your ancestors. I mean, I feel like we as mothers do that more, more than, than necessarily. Yeah. Then yeah, exactly. And and my dad, like, I think he also, you know, um, I think he's, he's never, processed or really um and i i have a lot of compassion for my father because i feel like he experienced so you know so much of that lived experience of racism and oppression to be brown what Mm -hmm. it means to be brown and indigenous that i don't think he's ever had pride in that Mm -hmm. i don't think you know what i mean like i think it's it's he would tell me like going for job interviews, they would ask you, are you Indio? Mm-hmm. Like that's a question yeah. on the thing. Are you an indigenous person? Yeah. And if the answer is yes, then we're not giving you this then job. Then it means yeah. you're not educated. Yeah. It means you're a farmer and that's yeah. negative. Yeah. It means all these things. So it's, we ha- you know, just to understand what that does to an entire yeah. generation, people, there's a lot to work on. Yeah. You know? Well, to, I mean, it's, it's uh, very dismantle, similar. Well, decolonize. It's, it's similar to the anti-blackness that is so deep inside of our psyche as Americans, you know, the well, and, and also, I mean, I think Latinos also, there's such a deep anti-blackness inside of Latinidad that is, is yeah. so often not even acknowledged that it, that it, it winds up becoming incredibly powerful and, and taking shape in all kinds of ways that, um, you know, and, and less, until we're actually articulating it and then doing it, um, it's going to continue to, it's going to continue to fester. So that, yeah. so that, that identity at, in terms of, of your work, like, like thinking about when you, I, I get it, like hip hop, I mean, hip hop absolutely starting inside of the culture is the, there is the politics inside of it already. Are you, like who I who I see you as and walking through the world now is someone who takes very clear stands on the, the issues you stand for. Your music is reflecting that. The the other artists that you're surrounding yourself is reflecting that. Um, was that did that kind of emerge, or did you feel like was there like something that kind of was a pivotal place where you were like, okay, I'm gonna use my work in a way to like amplify these ideas or these voices or these, or, or was there, was there a moment or is it kind of something that it's always been that it's always been that way. And hi, babe, you (laughs) didn't join in on my Instagram. (laughs) We knew it was happening. It was going to happen. Hello. (laughs) I love it. All right. Run away. I'm on, I'm on something important. (laughs) It's like, what? I'm important. What are you talking about? I know. I know. What's more okay, important? Shh, close the door. <laughs> and what I need right he, now. He I will have my other 23 hours. <laughs> yes. Oh. Actually, yes. stated Can is we good. actually, we actually take stated a breath? Can we just take a breath of the 24-7 freaking insanity and it's that it is to be a mother because right now? They, they come into our bed every night. Every so night. It is. Every night, it's yes. around the clock. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh. no I, well and and it really is it's like this mo this moment in time with this quarantine is has been a kind of brut- brutalness that i've never experienced as a parent of like of unrelenting like you don't get a space you, you already didn't get to go to the bathroom by yourself but now it's yeah. like <laughs> it's kind of like you had to just <laughs> what do you call it um, release to it <laughs> release totally. it's like i always yeah. have this analogy in my head of the i, I grew up you know beautiful having access to the beaches of Australia like in Sydney right we live far away but we still got there yeah and it's like you either go under the wave (laughs) or over it but you try to stop that wave (laughs) it's gonna smack you (laughs) so just 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 let it roll over yes totally it's a really beautiful metaphor when you go really deep under it and you feel it over you yeah and it's like okay I'm just gonna release and had to I think the most tension comes when you're 
trying to do something for yourself. Yes. And it's like, I'm going to get this. I got to make this post. <laughs> and you can't even, you can't even get two sentences to get, you're like, does this even make sense? No, it doesn't. You know? <laughs> And they're just like, mama, 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 mama. I know, I know. And it's just relentless. So, yeah, I, how, I was like how letting go. Do you have one or do you have two? I have two kids. Two. My daughter two. just came in. Um, my daughter is, um, is almost seven. She'll be okay. seven in July. Uh, Mandela. She wants uh -huh. to say hello as well. Say hi, Mandela. Hi, Mandela. Hi. <laughs> I like your name. <laughs> Good name. <laughs> thank you. And yeah. Satya um, is her brother who's four years old. Okay. And actually, when you name a daughter Mandela, where do you go from there, right? So, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we, we, um, we, Satya means truth. It comes from Satyagraha, truth force, mm -hmm. which was uh, what Gandhi called his nonviolent uh, mm -hmm. resistance. And it means, you know, it's like his idea was it, it's not a resistance, it's the truth. Yeah. This yeah. is the truth this and is the force of truth coming. <laughs> yes, yes. And so I, I love that idea. Um, definitely mm. inspired by, you know, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Nelson mm. Mandela. Um, well, it, yeah. that feels connected to how you're talking about your art making also, is that it's not there's this sense of like it being political or it being having an agenda. It, it just is, right? It is. It just I, is. Yeah. 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 And I don't, as going back to our conversation, I don't think there was ever a point where I was like, I'm going to be political. I didn't yeah. learn the term artivist until I came to the United States until yeah. uh, Dr. Marta Gonzalez, you spoke yes. to last week. Yes. She <laughs> taught, and Quetzal Flores, her, yeah. beautiful, her husband, who's produced both of my albums here, mm -hmm. um, uh, told me about, you know, about this term artivist, being yeah. an artist activist. Mm -hmm. And I'm just mm -hmm. going to. Where is their father? <laughs> right. <laughs> Close the door. <laughs> so like, I, told I always manage to keep the kids when he's doing his life things. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I feel so ah. reflected by you right now. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I don't think there was ever a, t a point. And then as I listen back, I mean, I definitely had fun doing fun songs, experimenting when I was, like, when I was younger, I started yeah. writing raps when I was 14, 15, you know, but, but I, I have always, this is who I am and it's mm -hmm. who I was raised to be. Like yeah. my parents, I definitely get it from my mom, but also my parents divorced, my mother remarried and my Australian father who was there for me when, what, you know, from the age of like, I don't know, 13 onwards, mm -hmm. uh, 14 onwards, maybe, I don't know, 13, um, you know, as a union organizer, uh, mm. very, you know, social worker. So yeah. there were always these conversations in my home. Yeah. Um, and I always understood a global perspective of yeah. the struggle of, mm. you know, the working class. Yeah. Working yeah. class. And then I brought up, you know, the Baha'i faith earlier because I feel like, you know, growing up in the Baha'i community, mm -hmm. I always had the principles of that, of what that meant, yeah. you know, that each prophet came with a message for this, for that, for that time. Yeah. And so it was like, you always respect um, each message, each religion, mm -hmm. that they're mm -hmm. all created equal. Mm -hmm. um, and that, every person is created equal and that mm. men and women are equal yes. and looking for the balance between science and religion. Yes. It was always like those this, values were already these there. values. So yeah. when I faced, you know, racism, it definitely hurt and stung and felt horrible. And I just came home and cried about it. But I, because I've been reflecting on this, but I also have a memory of like, I remember a friend being at my house and calling her mum to ask if I could come over mm -hmm. and her mum uh, basically saying no yeah, because of who I am. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't remember crying about it. I remember thinking that's strange. Like, mm -hmm. like she's weird. Like, Oh, I feel sorry <laughs> that you have a mum like that. Right. Like I remember feeling that she was wrong. Right. And there was something wrong with her. Right. And I'm glad that I had that upbringing to mm -hmm. understand that because, at least, you know. Well, well, and understanding, yeah, like understanding that there was nothing wrong with you, that there was, that this was not about you. It was about a system. It was about something right. that was bigger than you and that 
that's right. that's incredibly powerful i um I, I smiled when you said your stepfather was a, a union mm -hmm. organizer. Both my parents were union organizers growing up. And there is a way that I think growing up also in the labor movement, specifically um, in this country too. And I see you all have done work with the SEIU or like mm -hmm. work with the unions. And there's, there is a way that there's, um, there's, there's a conversation that I think really has been being had in labor that is just now starting to crack open in all kinds of new ways. Um, you know, I think labor has had a pretty bad reputation in, in, for many, many years. I mean, I grew up during the Red Scare too, when to be a communist or to be a socialist was seen as like, you know, basically being a terrorist and, and mm. completely and totally the, the amount of um, the pushback, you know, that we got as gr growing up, just even for our parents' political views. Mm. But, but there's this sense of like, yeah, there's, I mean, people are say, using the word socialism, they're using the word, you know, social construct and contracts and all of these ideas that are, that are, have been so in this country, like dirty words that are now starting to actually be like, yeah, wow, can you imagine that socialized healthcare, right? Like, what would that look like? I live that. <laughs> I live socialized healthcare. And I came, I mean, I've been in this country for 13 years. I became yeah. a citizen a year ago. So like, and, but I've, I've been shouting like yes. it can be another way <laughs> can be I've another experienced way. the other way yes. it's fine like yes. it, it I mean it's not perfect <laughs> no but it works but... like I my sister who has a mother of three mm -hmm. I watched her two children be born um it's free to it's have a child <laughs> in Australia and not only that we have this women's you know we have birthing centers so you can have your baby, like the ground floor is a birthing center with oh midwives God. and your doula <laughs> and there's a bath and a bed and how, exactly how you would want, it's you know, care. in your it's home. It's centering care. Exactly. Centering care. Yeah. Exactly. And then you leave. And by the way, the government gives you a baby bonus. Oh my so God. they give you money <laughs> because they know that you've just had a baby and yes. you're going to have extra expenses. And you so, need a, a moment. You need a moment to get yes, it together. Exactly. <laughs> like, so, so, like I so said, it can amazing. always improve and be better. The system, you know, but yeah, but it it does exist, and it can yes. be it can be better. It can yeah. be different. It sh you should not walk out of a hospital with a twenty thousand dollar bill. Like no, no what? matter what, no matter what. Yeah, no, no I will matter never what. No, I I will never forget. Super quick story of being in Cuba for the first time, and one of my uh, uh, someone who was close to me wound up getting. And this was actually not the first time; it was like the third or fourth time. And I, when we had taken our company, and they, and somebody hurt themselves, like really, mm. really, like jumped off of. We were swimming, jumped off a cliff, and <laughs> of <like> course, <laughs> landed really like you know in a shallow water. And um, he basically got rushed off in, a, in an ambulance. We followed him behind. By the time we got there, he was sitting in the waiting room with an x-ray in his hand. His entire leg was wrapped. And it had cost like a few dollars. And it was like, and then the, the doctor came out and was like, oh, I had no idea that he was not Cuban. I would have let him go to the international side because the international side is much faster and better. <laughs> we were like, oh. what? I mean, you know, I know, I know Cuba has its problems and like, come on, like, like, yeah, why but... can't that be the reality? And I mean, it can be the reality, it could be the reality. So like that, that idea yeah. of like, again, care, centering care, centering this idea, which is, yeah. which is the premise of all of this defunding the police, right? Like, what does it really yes. look like to defund the police is centering our entire strategy our entire system yes from a place of care i mean and that yes. is that is i've never imagined that i would be alive in a moment where this was actually being like possible. looking like a possibility I know. <laughs> I know i know i know i know i know that's how i feel too that's how i feel I, and, and it's almost always like you have to pinch yourself i know like is it really happening is it really it's happening, happening. <laughs> it's, it's happening. just yeah no i i know and i feel like you know, since the quarantine, since since this a global pandemic, it I know, I mean, it's been devastating. We've I've lost someone I love. You know, yeah. we've had so much life lost, but we've there's it's so crazy the yin and yang that always yeah. presents itself, right? Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. like it's painful and it's horrible, and the earth is repairing itself, and mm -hmm. the water is clearer. Yes, you know, it's like 
the no, two things and that our, are happening. And families are eating dinner together and like moment, like there's yeah. just so much. Spending yeah. so much time with my kids that like, yes. even though it's like eh, at times, it's also like, <laughs> it's wow, I have not it's seen them gift. in this way. Yes. Um, and then if it wasn't for that moment, we would not like where everything else was quiet and shut mm-hmm, down. Mm-hmm. Then I don't think we would have had this global, you know, massive escalation uprising. that we've needed yes. and uprising yes. that we have yes. needed. Cause as you know, like people have been in the fight. I mean, oh my God. for decades. Yes. For, for hundreds oh, of years. Hundreds of years. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's nothing new, but to see it happening all at the same time yes. around the world and people yes. standing up in solidarity. And to me, it's always the interconnectedness of all of the issues. So mm-hmm. I love, I love what you were saying, you know, this is about care mm-hmm. and it's like, it highlights everything that is wrong with this capitalistic system yeah. Yeah. and, you know, being prepared to face and it's not saying that it has to be full on socialism or, you know, um, I don't know if, if any system works perfectly, mm-hmm. but what, what can replace this? Because this yes. definitely does not it's work. It's not working. Yes. Yes. And when we're putting money and the dollar before human beings and mm-hmm. the earth and, yeah. you know, and animals. And I love, I love hearing the native American, um, um, ideology which is that we're all relatives yes i love that Mm -hmm. you know that Mm -hmm. the tree is our relative that you know the fish are our relatives Mm -hmm. like that we're all connected it's such a different we have to reframe work yes the way that we see and you just have to it's like wow everything we've known and been brought up in mm-hmm. all comes from a colonizing white supremacist patriarchal yes. Yes. viewpoint and it's undoing so that and no and undoing. undoing that is like a it's constant i mean there's yeah. you know i for example i've built a dance company inside of a of a capitalist white supremacist nation right and reality and system and and there's so many parts of the structure of it that are incredible and work and we've we've really you know gotten we found something that's incredible and there's so many parts of it that feel like it's actually participating in what we're fighting against and so there's yeah mm. there's there's so many there's so many places inside of i think this moment right now where we can be doing that work and packing that and and looking at like what how are we participating in it how are we participating in it unconsciously um and this yeah, I was going to say, it's everywhere. Like, the hypocrisy yeah. is everywhere. The phone we're talking on right now, the, yes. my, my Nike's on my feet. I yes. mean, you know, yeah. it, it's, it's everywhere. And if you, if you kind of, <laughs> if you go, you can go crazy. Yes. And, and then you just have to unplug and live off the land yes. somewhere in the bush. Yes. And that would be the only way to kind of feel the pressure off a little bit but there are choices that we can make within like you said within this world that we are that we Mm -hmm. have right now Mm -hmm. um one thing for me is you know plastic is like not buying plastic yeah like especially kids toys and just understanding (laughs) sorry my nine-year-old slamming doors and my three-year-old's asleep stop it he's he's gonna wake him up and then i'm gonna have a i'm gonna have a three-year-old awake i'm trying his name sydney a uh, Sydney, yes, yes, but it's spelled with an I, not with okay. a Y, but, but it's still yes. As in Poitier, as in Sid. No, my my um, my husband's grandfather, who he never knew but loved so much, was was a Sydney, and so he wound up yes, beautiful. But his, but his beautiful. Mid- middle name is Malachi, which means wow. you know, angel of like like gift from uh, uh, the messenger mm. of the angels. But but um, yeah, the my oldest is running around on a on a FaceTime with his grandmother as she's reading to him, oh, <laughs> but slamming. So sweet. I know, it's very sweet, but slamming doors. I think on purpose. To, to, to I'm attention. still here. I know. I'm just still like here, Mom. You know. <laughs> so, so Maya, tell us a little bit about what you're doing now. Like, what are what are the projects that you're working on right now? The things that yeah. you want to share. Um. I haven't really been able to write. I, I don't know. I think like after the full day with the kids, then my brain just turns to mush. <laughs> I need to be writing. And now yes. I'm like, okay, I need to just carve out time yes. and figure it out. Um, 
but apart from that, as Artivist Entertainment, Artivist is um, my husband and I, who's Aloe Black with mm -hmm. Quetzal Flores. Yeah, uh, Quetzal. Another amazing, Quetzal is um, from the band Quetzal. Mm -hmm. Also, um, Alberto Lopez, who yes, is from, know. you know, Alberto yes. is an incredible human being. Yes, he uh, is. Musician, um, sound engineer, all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and Veronica Gonzalez, who is in um, PR and marketing. So we founded Artivist Entertainment a few years ago. Um, right now, we've been partnering with Our Right to the City for their cancel rent um, activation. That's and good. so since the pandemic, we've been producing concerts, you know, to just bring awareness and mm -hmm. to really campaign that folks can't be paying rent, mortgage. No, no. It's, it's not just cancel rent, it's cancel mortgage and homes for all. So yes. it's looking at housing justice. Yes. And that, you know, that everyone deserves the right to have a home. Mm -hmm. um, and we kind of took a pause because we're like, okay, obviously we know it's all connected <laughs> yes. and this is, all, this is not separate issues. Mm -hmm. However, how do we, um, you know, how do we contribute to this um, moment momentum. within this, yeah. yes, this momentum, yeah. and also be there because folks are going to start getting evicted. Like yeah. the moratorium is coming up, right? And evictions are going to start taking place. We need to fight for them, mm -hmm. and we need to provide resources, legal mm -hmm. resources, so people know that their rights. Right. So there is definitely, I, I'm concerned about the next year of mm -hmm. what is coming. Yeah. Because of the shutdown. Right. Um, and so there definitely is a need um, mm -hmm. to continue the work, um, but we're just sort of uh, taking a pause for Juneteenth and mm -hmm. we'll continue after Juneteenth. So can um, go to cancelrent.us for okay. more information on that, Great. on that side of things. If you have any questions as well, there's plenty of resources there. Um, so that's kind of what we've been doing right now. Our next... Um, concert will be with uh, Gabriel uh, Tiedros from mm -hmm. Seattle alongside um, Violet Lovatai who mm -hmm. works with um, the Tenants Union mm -hmm. and um, and hopefully Rebel Diaz because mm -hmm. we had them booked but um, need to uh, you know confirm the new date so yes that's exciting <laughs> so it'll that's be exciting. fine yes <laughs> I love it and so you're doing are you doing any performing or anything happening right now or are you really just in mom and mom mode <laughs> <laughs> it's weird because it's like performing online right it's yes. like, uh, it's weird it's so weird yeah. i did well behind I did, you did that live uh, grand performances last oh, week yes. and I, was like, I was like i'm performing to myself it's like two, two no there were screens people of myself. They, we were there we were there but the, but the video it's like seeing your yes. own face yeah, like that's not fun at all. I know it's it really does. It's that the the <laughs> piece of of having the energy of the crowd or and the energy of, even of the other performers on stage with you is really it's it's all of that perf live performance is so much about energy and about connection and so it's really it is we're the we're exchange. It's yes. an exchange. Yeah. We're, we're so. about to do one of these um, in mid-July. We're going to be doing a, a live stream performance and we're going to be in our own places, you know, like it's, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious what it's going to feel like, but I do, I do feel like we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're really trying to figure out how are we doing this work in this new yeah. sort of realm um, and, and how, yeah. how are there ways that we're building connections and building that energy in different ways, right? Mm. That, that maybe won't look like the same the, the idea yeah. of just performance, but it will look like something. Um, I think it's, it's a good problem to, for us to have to be solving right now. I think yeah. of ha how to deepen the connection through our work. Yeah. And um, it really highlights how much we need each other. Mm -hmm. Like how much mm -hmm. we need to not just th like that this screen cannot replace a, the human connection mm -mm. that you have when you're in the presence of somebody else. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So, so I'm kind of curious, this brings me to the next, the next question, which is about how, how mothering is showing up in your, I mean, I know we <laughs> talked about it being 24 seven right now, but, but how, how has it in the past and how is it showing up maybe differently in terms of like the way that you're thinking about your work or, or, I mean, you have young kids, a lot of the, a yeah. lot of the women that we've been talking to have kids who are older. 
um, who have grown up and her, who are in different places in their lives right now, but you're in the thick of it. <laughs> so, in the thick of it. Yeah. Like you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, I think for us, meaning my husband and I, I mean, getting on the same page around parenting, that's a whole other oh, conversation. Yes. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Oh, uh, my, I'm standing right here, and yes, that is a no. It's a, no, it's the it's so real. I'm it's like real. The, I'm like I'm the one that like lays down the law, and he's always the one that like behind me, kind of like oh, it's okay. okay, maybe I get to do it later. <laughs> and I'm like, that's yes. not helpful. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah, it's always about us, isn't it? It's yes. always about us. Yes. <laughs> um. Yeah. I think you know it. it during this time, we, we definitely, um, what is the right term to use here? What I know that what I, what I'm about to say is very controversial within, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> movement circles and let's go, for circles, it. let's go for it. <laughs> but I'm constantly, you know, I'm still learning and growing, but mm -hmm. I'm of the mindset that, and not just me, my husband and I, raising black kids mm -hmm. in this country, in this mm -hmm. moment, are of the uh, ideology that we need to protect their childhood. Mm -hmm. If we, I mean, obviously if you have the privilege to do so, there are yes. families that you cannot avoid, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of talking to them about race and racism and slavery, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we do not have those conversations with our kids. Mm -hmm. They're four and six years old. Mm -hmm. We don't believe that, that this is the time to have those conversations. It's not that mm -hmm. we won't, because mm -hmm. um, obviously they're Mandela and Satya, like yeah. they know. <laughs> <It's> like <they're... laughs> So they they must if they know their names that's already you are talking to them about politics, exactly right? but in a way that yes. for me is age appropriate you know yes. like I feel like from the time you know they were born mm -hmm. we're given these books about um, you know to understand and process racism and yeah. violence and murder mm -hmm. and, you know I mean my daughter my daughter found a book <laughs> in our library. Yes. Um, it was like a childhood, a child book, but it's the story of Malala, mm. who I do want her to know the story of Malala one day, <clears throat> but she went, she just learned how to read. So she oh, just, no. oh, she yeah. just devouring, <laughs> devoured the book. Yes. And then she's six. Then she asked me, why was Malala shot in the face? Mm. And who is the Taliban? Yeah. And all of these questions. And to me, it's, I want my child to believe in a world that is safe and mm -hmm. good Mm -hmm. and is loving right mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. because while we're talking about this idea of reimagining yeah i feel like children um are in this magical space they already yeah. come here close to god i they mean they're are the most closest to spirit yeah. than, right than any of us absolutely and we see that in so many ways with everything that they say. I mean, I call my kids, you know, when they're young, I was like my little Buddha because yeah. they keep you present yes. always. You always. always, you cannot yes. be anything but present with children. No. no. So, <laughs> so I feel like they're in this, this world where of possibility and they don't have any meanings about anything right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are pure. Mm -hmm. They don't have the idea of, these people think this way and we think that da, 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 yeah. and and by the way you come from a lineage of oppressed peoples like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i'm not gonna dump that to me it's like they cannot process what that means mm. or hold and same with the pandemic like yeah i'm not like we are freaking out and stressed and full of anxiety when when coronavirus we were like what is this trying yes. to figure out what it is and if right. we're in danger for it my six-year-old surely cannot process what coronavirus is. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? To understand it, to feel worried. I, I don't want her to be in fear mm -hmm. of her life or mm -hmm. in fear of anybody. I'm curious cause, because it's funny. I feel like growing up in a movement at home, I never had the, I, I absolutely didn't have the choice to not kind of know what was happening because we were in the we were in the thick of it there were I had I had murders happen in my family mm. at a very very young age and we were in like court hearings around what was happening and so there was like this way that I I don't ever remember I don't ever remember actually thinking that the world 
outside of my family and community and village was a safe place. It, I've always felt like it was like a pretty dangerous place that was not, didn't have my best interest in mind necessarily. But I also always remember this really deep sense of feeling like my family and my home and my village were like the safest, most loving, most powerful place. And so mm. I think because of that, I like, I remember as a kid, I was able to really imagine, like I imagined worlds where like the, my internal world and my world that was close to me could be like the world out there. And I think like as an art maker, that's beautiful. That's kind of like what I've done with my art, which is very much about like manifesting and creating worlds that exist that I know are possible. It's kind of like what you're saying, even with healthcare, it's like, you know, it's possible, you know, mm. it, you've seen it, and you felt it for yourself. So you know that you can kind of stand for it in a different way. Um, I'm curious with your kids, like, are they hearing you all have conversations? Are they sensing your energy around things? Or Oh, energetically, yeah. 100%. And yeah. I, I realized, I said to my <clears throat> husband, we are way too stressed. Like, we yeah. need to just <laughs> put that. Because we're yeah. like, you know, we try it. We usually, we always sit down for a family dinner. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we're on our phones or we're running to the room yeah. doing a text or, <laughs> or listening to something. Yeah. Like, they 100% energetically feel what's going on. We do not. Yeah. Um, play the news in front of them. Yeah, we control our conversation around. We try to speak in Spanish, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we try to control our conversation. We try to I save it. it for the end does, when they're asleep. Does Alice speak Spanish? Too? Oh yeah, he's Panamanian. Oh, oh he's Panamanian. His parents are that. yeah migrated from Panama. He speaks better Spanish than me, which is so I hilarious. Gonna say, I was going to say you started speaking more Spanish probably with it. Yeah, because he studied it too. I learned like de la calle. Like, yeah, I de learned, la calle. I learned going to Mexico, being forced to speak it. to my grandparents and tios. Yeah. <laughs> my grandma actually spoke English, perfect English, oh. because uh, my great grandfather came to Kansas, Wichita, mm. Kansas, worked on the railroad. Okay. And brought the whole family, but then hated the United States, ripped up their papers and went yeah. back <laughs> minus two older <laughs> kids, my grandma's older siblings who decided to stay because oh, wow. they found love and all right. that. Yes. So I have uh, like hundreds of cousins in uh, Kansas, which is wow. amazing. That's amazing. But, so she, my grandma went to school in um, America and then went back to Mexico anyway. Okay. That's a whole nother story. Yeah, but I yeah, it. I learned trying to communicate with them, which is another side note. Traveling in Mexico with, <laughs> with aloe is hilarious because People they are all probably like, what? to speak. And then I'm like, can you tell? And, and then he's, he's like, speaks. perfect, beautiful Spanish. <laughs> I love it. And they're it's like, so uh, okay, what's wrong with you? That's you amazing. Know? And then, of, of course, you get all the um, gringa uh -huh. and all that. I'm like, I'm not a gringa. I'm a cangorita. <laughs> anyway. Cangorita. <laughs> I always, when I used to travel to Mexico, I used to say, you know, from, from Australia, I was like, no soy americana, soy australiana. I was like, don't treat me so bad. I'm Australian. Like, like, we're better. I know. I will say there have been but times yeah. where I've pretended not to be American when I've traveled because I'm like, I don't feel proud of that. I'm like, no, truly, truly. But for me, it was like, our dollar happening. is the same. Our dollar is oh, the yeah. same. Don't rip me off. Like, the Australian <laughs> dollar is equal to the peso. Come on. Oh, my God. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> well, so you were saying you speak Spanish okay. with each other. You're speaking, oh, you, so yeah. we don't speak in front of them. So uh, there's a, an author named um, Kim John Payne. Uh -huh. um, he's a psychologist and, uh, and he wrote a book called Simplicity Parenting. Mm. Um, I also, full disclosure, we, we go to a Waldorf school. So okay. we're in the Waldorf Steiner education. Yeah. yeah. So it's a whole, this is a holistic education yes. that looks at the whole child, looks yeah. at the brain development, the organs, the body development, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. they're at at different stages. Yeah. You know, there's certainly room for improvement there within that education. hundred percent right. agree. But fundamentally, I believe in the the principles, which is, you know, Kim John Payne did a, um, oops, sorry, a study. It's fine. <laughs> did a study on. Um, so he was seeing. He would work in um, uh, what do you call it? Like detention, like refugee camps, mm -hmm. and treat children with PTSD. He mm -hmm. went to um, England and worked in these affluent neighborhoods and started treating white rich kids with mm -hmm. PTSD and he was like mm. why are they showing the same signs mm -hmm. and so he did 10 years of research and wrote this book Simplicity Parenting <laughs> okay I'll be out in one second okay okay go. yes 
<laughs> it's perfect. This is perfect. Ah, this is like, there, there is not one interview that I've had with a mama Artemis where we haven't had our children be doing this. So don't even. <laughs> Like, I know. It's perfect. They come he, right on cue. He recognized something that he's like, did you take our table? I was like, I took that like last week. And he only just realized. Anyway. Um, so, yeah. So he wrote this book. I recommend it. And it basically talks about. Um, Simplicity he, Parenting. Simplicity you? Parenting by Kim John Payne. Um, and, you know, it talks about. I, I'm thinking about how all these, ki how all our teenagers, right, are suffering mm -hmm. from depression, yep. anxiety, suicide rates are off yeah. the charts. Yeah. So what is happening, right? Yeah. And yeah. so what he wrote made a lot of sense to me and really mm -hmm. resonated with me. And it was about, you know, certain things. There's just too much. It's mm -hmm. too much information. And yeah. again, my children are four and six. So yes. you're about a 12-year-old, a different story. Different story, yeah. Yeah. But at I know, four my, years my, old. My nine-year-old looks like he's 11. So okay. it's starting to get. And sometimes <laughs> intellectually, you know, but you yeah. have to balance that intellectual with the, with the emotional. Totally. So if we have the news on constantly, if we're talking constantly, if we're rushing, it's even things like mm -hmm. you got to go to your dance class and then your sports yeah. class and then this and yeah. then that. And yeah. there's no room to breathe. There's no rhythm in the to day. Be. Yeah. To just be. It's like mm -hmm. we've got to get here, got to get there. Mm -hmm. Constant screen time. Like we, mm -hmm. very, we have very limited screen time. In, yeah, in our house true. we have okay so we don't do the yeah. news we don't have the conversations we still have a lot of stuff we have too much stuff but the mm -hmm. stuff we need to start getting rid of because you know even this thing of abundance of toys like there's yeah. no there's Excess. no relationship with the toy or appreciation yeah. for something how can something be treated as valuable and special when you have 10 of them in, yes. in 10 different colors yeah you yeah. know, and, then, and, and it's throw also, away culture, the idea exact, of like, oh, it's broken. You just throw it away and get a new one. Exactly. Yeah. It's all yeah. connected. It's all it can. I talk to my daughter all the time when she's like, I want this house, the Barbie house. The, and I just say, look, you know, can you imagine when you're finished with this? It's sitting What's, in Mother sitting Earth. In a yeah. In Mama Earth. Like, what <laughs> yeah. is she going to do? She can't break this down. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so, and so I, you know, I talk to them in certain ways that, mm -hmm. that I feel that they can understand. Um, but we definitely preserve the magic of childhood and this, mm. you know, zero to seven years old yeah. is such a, it's, it's that, that's that sacred. first stage. Yeah. It's a sacred spirit. They yeah. are spiritual beings. Mm -hmm. We really believe in education through um, stories and, mm -hmm. and pictures and metaphors. Mm -hmm. So uh, a mentor of mine, beautiful uh, Miss Kikansa Ramsey Ray, Kikansa mm -hmm. is also in the movement, has been organizing for years, but also um, opened up the, um, the Village Play Garden, which is an early mm -hmm. childhood um, I know school. That, yeah. You know Village Play Garden? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. She created a story um, right now for these times mm -hmm. as a way for children to understand um, it's like talking about anti-blackness without mm -hmm. talking about it, uh, without naming it in that way. Uh -huh. But is that is that on a, online? Or she is just it, shared it personally. Mm -hmm. I will ask her if it's if it's public. Yeah, but or she if you wrote could share a, it with me if she's yeah. okay with that. I would yeah. love to show my totally. own little little people. <laughs> this is the thing. It's like so they understand a story, and and you know, it's more about um, love. You know, what I'm realizing especially for myself personally, it's mm -hmm. like I have a whole album about what I stand, what I'm against. Yeah. I have a whole album, I fight the system against yeah. this, against that. But what's the affirmative? What am mm. I standing for? And yes. I think that's where the magic is with our Ooh. kids, like teaching them the love yes. and the, you know, and the beauty. That's, and how powerful is that for us also right now in this moment? I mean, so much yeah. of the work, the, my initial work was around resistance and resistance yeah. and, I have, I've always said that as I get, I've gotten older, resistance really has become about love. Like, how are we leaning in and pushing back with that love? Like, the, it's not about the, it's not about the resisting from a place of, again, the lack, right? Or of, of um, undoing something. It's about, it's really about like, what are we manifesting in its place? Because like, let's undo it. Yes, let's fight the system. Let's break it apart. But like, we got to imagine what, what can be there, you know, like yeah. what's, what's possible. So I yes. love that Maya. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so I know that we're about to run out of time yes. and I've totally haven't given time for people to answer, ask questions. If there is anyone out there that wants to <laughs> ask a question, you can, but 
But um, is there anything left that you'd like to, if you wanted to impart any wisdom, love, share anything left that you'd like to say? Um, love, yes. is, love is the answer. Uh, to mm-hmm. quote my husband, yes, <laughs> he has a absolutely. whole song about it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know, it. <laughs> I think I, lo- you know, as an artist, I believe in in you and artists who use their art for positive social transformation. Mm-hmm. We we just have to keep doing what we can do within the realms of whatever that looks like for us. Like mm-hmm. we are a part of the movement. We have some. Everybody has something to give to this movement, yes. um, and there's a place for us all in it. Mm-hmm we just have to, you know, this is our moment. Yeah. This is, yeah. this is it. I, yes. I love that it's happening as Malina, Dr. Melina Abdullah said in the, um, the meeting yesterday, the world is cracked open right now. Yes. The world has cracked it's open. Cracked open. <laughs> make history. So, Let's make history. Defund the yes. police. That's my yes. word of wisdom. Absolutely. Defund, Defund the police. <laughs> care, not and care, cops. care, not cops. Invest yeah. in communities reimagine other ways of caring for each other reimagine mm-hmm. th- these ways exist there are infrastructures already set up we just need to invest in them that's yes. it yes period end of the punto <laughs> tan, tan. <laughs> tan, tan. <laughs> i love this so much and i'm so, Thank so you. glad that i got to be able to share some space with you i always joke that these these conversations are like my excuse to get to hang out with folks that i want to hang out with because I, Me too. Cause i'm with my kids 24 7 <laughs> I, I got to put makeup on. Adult time, yes. <laughs> a little, little lip gloss. <laughs> Thank so you so I, much. I do want to just say, um, share this, please. This conversation will be on our on our page. We just also put out a um, a, a video today called "This is This is Our Protest." Um, which please, please nice. share it and see it and, and feel it. Um, it's, it's with Las Cameteras Cano. Cano created Yay. some rhythms underneath it. And, um, and so, and just, just um, as we continue to just build the movement, um, like I'm, I'm super excited for us to keep having these conversations and, and continue to share the work that you're doing and the, Thank you and the so work much. that Chimple's doing. Mm-hmm. And um, those of you who are watching and going to watch this later, we do on Tuesdays, we have... I don't know if you're ever available on, on, um, on Wednesday mornings, but we have a dancing familias class that I yes. teach. It's like Let's for kids it. to just basically get down with their families. They, I, I choreograph hugs into it. So, nice. <laughs> so we're like dancing and sweating and moving and hugging. Although my, my son doesn't like the hug part because I'm sweating. But, <laughs> but it's really fun. And, um, and, it's, and it's a free class that we do every, every Wednesday morning. And Thank you also, for that offering. Yes, we do a Thursday class as well um, where our company, a rotating teacher from our company teaches. So um, please, yeah, Beautiful. stay 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 in touch and Maya thank you for the work that you're doing uh you're such an inspiration and thank you for joining us thank you so much thank you I'll Yay. see you on the dance floor yes wow. absolutely <laughs> much love ciao everybody ciao. thank you for joining us <laughs>